So you were arrested in Washington. Mm -hmm. And how was that? That's good. And how did you get down to Washington to be arrested? Did you just say, I'm from Fort McMurray, I decided to go? Well, actually, my friend Margie Kidder called me up and, uh, and paid my way with her uh, air miles. And we stayed at our friend's place in Washington, D.C. And um, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to go get arrested or not. I didn't know. Although that was the plan, Marty definitely was going to get arrested. But I was going to be sure and um, leave things open so I would know right. if that's what I was meant to do or not. So that's what I did. I felt it out, and uh, by the morning, I knew that that's what I was going to go ahead and do. So uh, it, it uh, felt the energy around it was very powerful. Felt like the, the right thing to do. That's, that's something that has bothered me for many, many years. Many, 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 many years. And people were not thinking about it. People were not at, at my back. My own people were not at my back. When I so would talk about, about tar these sands? issues, you're when about tar I would sands? talk about the environment, environment, when I would talk about fire, when I would talk about water, when I would talk about our stories, I would talk about the arts. Uh, how about the arts are a fundamental force to, for any society to be healthy. That's where the stories, the songs, the dances are the kernel. Those are the ceremonies of any civilization, I don't care what part of the planet you come from, what color you are, or anything. That's fundamental, in my mind. And I would go to Métis assemblies or something like that, and I would talk about these things. They're all talking economic development and business and all of that. And then I would bring up these ideas, and I'd be elbowed away from the mic. Nobody wanted to hear anything about it. <coughs> so, um, I, uh, I got... I got very, and, and then, you know, uh, on, on the other side of it, you go amongst environmentalists and, uh, you know, it's quaint. But, you know, the, the whole idea of who we are as indigenous people belonging to the earth was not really considered all that important. Still, you know, the idea of us being kind of a little primitive was there, and you could feel it. In the environmentalist so, circles or yeah. in the circles, the Métis communities? No, they, no our, ours was a different focus. It was about how are we going to get out of this poverty, and it was about economic development and business and all of that kind of stuff. And on the other side of it is our people were, you know, handy and nice for certain things, but certainly had no place at the core of the environmental movement. So, uh, and that was many, many years ago. And I, so you're I talking just talking 70s there, 1970s, 1980s? 70s, yeah. And I just, I just got tired of the whole works. Went out on my thumb and, uh, and uh, told God, I don't like any of them. I know you love them, but uh, you got to show me something. Do you know David I'm Suzuki? I'm coming up dry here. <laughs> Do you know David Suzuki? Sorry? Do you know David Suzuki? Yes, I know him. Because yeah. David slowly has worked for decades and I decades. I know. He, to, was, he was working at, the, at that for a long, long time. But to change but, the point of view about yeah. First Nations, Earth, White yeah. Nations. Yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, <clears throat> bless him, bless him. And so, you know, the agony of, of somebody like Chief McDonald, who is really trying to, trying to do something in the early, early ages, of what was going on. This tar sands, they knew what was there in the, in the late 1800s. That groundwork of making sure that I didn't know anything about a drum when I was growing up in that community, uh, that making sure that our culture was outlawed, 
that we have no strength, we had no connection. There's discouragement about trap lines and that way of life that depends on the, on the land is passe. Um, that is not a way to make a living. That's not a way of life. You know, you, you really have to come into town and you have to learn to work nine to five, try to train these Indians, you know, to punch in a clock and be there, you know, every day and uh, all of this kind of stuff. Oh, they had such a hard time, man, training these Indians. And, you know, these are the things <laughs> that, uh, that I saw. And, um, and so I got disgusted with the whole uh, world, so I went away. Where did you go? On my own, I, on, in my own world. And I uh, wouldn't listen to anything political at all. And uh, no use for businesses. Uh, I just, you know, when acting work came along, I was happy as could be. But for the rest of life, it was very, very difficult for me to accept it, enjoy it, or have any sense about it. That was... And when did you re-engage? Actually, uh, I re-engaged when I started. Uh, there's a different events that happened in my life. I, I, I kind of recognized that my fire was going out. And that's from too many years of doing other people's dreams, other people's uh, creative endeavors. You mean you in know? terms of theater and television, or do you mean yeah, a broader just world? just being an actor. And, and just, you know, being a little color or a little flash or something in somebody else. We need else's. a bit more wallpaper. We need some First Nations wallpaper. Get 10, too. That's right. Don't give her too many words. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, and, and then after a while, uh, you know, if you don't express yourself and don't tell yeah. your own stories, then your <clears throat> fire starts to go out. And with the, um, you know, attempted at gen genocide and, and growing up without the stories, without the ceremonies, without all that, um, I didn't have my own drum.